Welcome back aliens, my name is Avin Reddy and let's continue the series on Spring Framework. Now till this point we have worked with Spring Boot and Spring Framework but that was for the standalone application or console based application. Now we want to focus on the web. See the project which we were discussing is actually a web project and of course we have seen the project before but uh, if you talk about the layers we do have a client here right now this is a client and then we have a server with different layers and then we have a database. Of course we are using database here so that we can get some data and we want to store that data for the permanent purpose. So that will store in database and then we can fetch it. Uh, we are using a server which will accept the request from the client which will process the request uh, maybe get, getting data from the database so there are different operations here. The client is someone who is using this app application. So you are the client, I'm the client. So whoever opens this application or the website on the, on the browser is a client. Now this client is not just a web application, it can be a mobile application as well. So maybe you can have one more client here, which is your mobile application. And then this mobile application can also send requests and get response. Okay, so basically in the mobile application, the layout will be there. What you are going to send from the server is just data. And most of the time or most of the application which you are building now follows this approach where basically you only send the data. So think about a mobile application, maybe any, uh, any application which is your favorite. Uh, example, if you are watching a sport, it can be any sport. And if you don't want to watch the match, you, but you want to check the score. So we have certain applications which will give you this code. But if you open that application, of course you will get the layout and you will also get the data. But let's say internet is not working. So that app will give you the layout. But that app cannot give you the data because data is coming from the server. That means app will already have the layout. What you are going to send from the server, it is just the data. Same goes for your client. See in the earlier days, you know, if you go back way back in the time, uh, when you send something from the server, the server has to send two things. First, the layout and also the data, right? Uh, so when I say data, it can be simple data. But what about the layout? Layout has to be done with the help of HTML and CSS, okay? And that's what you will make your page look beautiful on the client side. So server is responsible to generate both. But nowadays what we are doing is we are using two different applications for the for the front end and for the for the back end so what you do is you use certain certain things like react or maybe angular js in this you basically have the layout ready which will go to the client and then you will send the request for the data from the server and then server will send the data and this data can be represented with the help of json or maybe xml okay so that means as a back end you are responsible to send only the data the client can be a browser which has React application uh, loaded. Of course, you will have to send that from the server itself, but as a separate uh, thing. Or maybe your front end, or maybe your uh, client is a mobile application where the layout is already there. What you will send here is again JSON. Now there are different formats like JSON XML. Uh, JSON is very famous, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation, uh, which is a very simple and good looking format data which you get on the client side. Okay, so when I say good looking, not exactly it will look good. It's just that it's simple to understand and uh, simple to represent. Okay, so basically uh, this is what we are building, right? Now we are not concerned about React here. Of course, you will get the code uh, in the upcoming videos. We are concerned about building a backend. How do you build a web backend? So we are going to create this controller. This is what is important. Now how we are going to do this? Now this has to be a special a special uh, project, not, a, not the project which we are doing because in this project we don't have the web feature. How do I know that? See, when you go to the pom.xml file, we are saying that it is a Spring Boot starter project. In the starter project, you will not get web by default. You want web. If you remember, when we went for the Spring projects, the web was a separate part. So we have to add Spring Web here. Of course, you can simply add a dependency that will, that will make your job good. But I don't want to add dependency now. Again, it will be more confusing. So what we'll do is, and of course you can do that. It's just that I'm avoiding it. So what you can do is you can go back to your browser. Remember this page, this uh, particular website, which is start.spring.io. This is where you can create a new project for web. So I will create a Maven project and then the language is Java. The Spring Boot version, so when we have started the videos, it was 3.2.5, now it is 3.2.6, upgraded version. 
and okay so we'll change the group id which is com.telescope project is simple web app and then we are going to create a packaging of jar and the version which i'm using in this machine is 21 so i'll go with that next we have to add dependencies this is spring starter boot or spring boot starter will be already there you don't have to add that what we have to add is web so we'll be using spring web enter apart from this i'm also going to add the dev tools see what happens is every time you make a change in your code you have to restart your server what i want to do is i want to have a live reload and that's what you get here so basically you can also it also improves your application restarts if you want to restart it will provide you live re uh, live reload that will help to speed up so we just need this too of course we don't want to include database at this point but if you want to do that you can add one more dependency for our databases maybe uh, the mysql driver if you want to use or postgres i'm going to use postgres but if you want to use mysql that's your choice uh, but at this point we don't need any of the uh, dbms or databases driver so i'll simply click on generate this will generate the project for me and that's what is here uh, we just have to unzip it and load in your project so i'm going to unzip this so unzipping done and now we have to basically open that in the IDE. So I'll go back to the IDE. I will say open the project. So this is the project which we got. I will just click on open. Uh, I will use a new window or maybe this window I just want. I don't want this window anymore. And you can see, uh, okay, we already have demo spring. We'll close that. So you can see this is your spring project. And the beauty is this is a web project, right? And I have not done any coding yet. In the normal world, uh, I mean, before Spring Boot, if you want to run your uh, web application, basically you have to run a server. It can be a Tomcat server or some other servers. Basically, first you have to run the server in your machine and then you can basically run your project af after the configuration. But now I have not done any coding. Still, I will go back to my main. If you can see, we already have a main code here. I will just right click here and say run without doing any coding. And it should work and it worked if you can see it says spring awesome this uh, text here and it says the server started the server started on port number 8080 so that means even doing any code it is running at this point i will just stop it i just want to show you something i will just go back to my browser and i will just go here localhost colon 8080 why 8080 is because we were running the project on 8080 i will say enter at this point it says this site cannot be reached is because the server is not running but what I will do is I will just run this now. Let's run the project and uh, yeah, bit fast. Cool. Uh, it says the, it started on 8080. I will just say enter. Can you see that? We got something. Of course, not the output we were expecting, but we got something, right? We are not getting that page which says uh, the site is not reachable. You are getting something. It says 404 because we are sending a request for the home page, and we have not handled the request. How do we do that? How do we handle the request? Maybe I just want to say, welcome to Telescope. How do I do that here? And for that, basically we need someone on the server who can accept our request. The request is going to the server, but there's no one on the server side who can say, hey, you know, let me handle it and let me return welcome to Telescope. Let's create that particular person there. Not a person, some service. The way you can do that is you can right click on your project or you can right click on your package and create a new Java class. And you'll be saying, seriously, we have to create a Java class to handle the request? Yes, a simple class can do that. Let me show you. Or maybe I'm just lying here. Let's try. So what I will do is I will say, uh, maybe home. I want to, I want someone who can handle the home page request. Now question arises: who is that particular person? Can I say person here? Doesn't matter. Who is that particular person who can handle this? And that's where we have talked about the controller. So we need a layer here, a class maybe, who is a controller who can handle your request. So I will say this is my home controller. And in this home controller, I can accept the request and respond. But the question is, if you want to do that in Java, how do you, how do you make something work? So basically we need a method here. So I will create a method and this method returns a string because I want to say welcome to the disco, right? So I will say public string, it returns a string and the method name can be, let's say, greet. So if someone is coming to the home page, I will say greet and I will simply return welcome to the disco. That's it, simple class, simple method. And you just save this 
and restart and see the magic. So I'll just restart this, go back to my page and the magic. Nothing happened. That's the magic. Nothing happened. See, the thing is, Spring is awesome. Spring is magic, but not entire magic. We have to do, we still have to do some configuration. Uh, not much. The problem is, see, this is a normal class, right? Now, Spring has no idea that this class is responsible to handle the request for the home page. And we don't want Spring to guess because once you start expecting your framework to guess something for you, it becomes uncontrollable. You, you don't know what's happening behind the scene or uh, if something is buggy, it will be difficult to debug. And that's why you need control. So what I want to do is I want to say, hey, you know, this is a normal, not a normal class Spring framework. This is someone who, who is a controller. So you just say add controller. Remember in Spring Boot, we have used add component. In the same way, if you want to create a controller, just say add controller. Will this do a job? Uh, see, not exactly. See, on the website, you will be having multiple requests. We are requesting home page. Maybe after some time you want to have contact us, about us, add to cart, or maybe all those features, right? Everything is a request. Request with, with different URL. What URL I'm talking about? See here, you get URLs, right? Like we can have about, or maybe you can have contact. So this is important. At this point, I'm not passing anything, so that's blank. We can only say slash, enter. So I want to do it for the slash. So for every request, you can create a different method which will respond. So at this point, I'm requesting for this. If someone requests for the slash, which is the home page, I want this to be get, getting called. And to do that, we have to use a method called request mapping. Okay, so this is the annotation, not method. So we have to use annotation, which is request mapping. And in the, back, in the bracket of this, we can say for which request. For the slash request, I'm to, I want to call this. So that's request mapping. Now, will this work? See, we, we learn from errors, right? And we will get errors here. Let's see, but what error you get? I will just refresh this and it says, okay, it still says 404. Uh, that's weird. But if you see, it is also saying something. It says, no static resource, welcome to the disco. Something different, okay? So it says, welcome to the disco. But no, it is not showing the text. But it says, no static resource, welcome to the disco. See, what happens is, a uh, controller behind the scene, and this is how Spring Framework was built before, and depending upon your use case, you can customize it. So what it does is, it says, okay, I am going to call this, and I'm calling this method, okay? The method is getting called. To show you the proof, what I will also do is, I'll say I'm here. Just to show you that this works, I'll just restart the app and go back here, say refresh, it's still not reloaded or done. If I show you the console, it says I'm here. That means this method is getting called for sure, but still it's not working. The reason it is not working is what your Spring Framework does or Spring Web does is, it says when you call this method and when you return welcome to the disco, it will look for a file called welcome to the disco. But why file? Remember when I talked about the old days when a server used to send the layout with data and that layout is a page. So it is searching for a page called welcome to the disco. In our project, we don't have that page and we don't want to return the page. We want to return the text, right? And to achieve this, what you can do is, instead of using a controller, you can use something called a REST controller. Now, REST API is a concept where you return the data from the, from the server to client. So REST stands for representational state transfer. You basically transfer the state, the data from the server to client, not the layout, only the data. And if you want to do that, automatically you can use REST controller. This is one way. Uh, the other way is you can send here, you can use one more annotation by saying, hey, I'm not looking for the page, I'm looking for the body, the data. So you can say response body. So what it will do is it will return the data now. Uh, I hope this will work if the annotations are correct. Go back here and refresh and you got welcome to the disco. So basically what we are doing is we are returning the data, not the page. But if you want to get the pages, you can do that with the help of Thameleaf or a JSP. You can create those pages here and you can return them by mentioning the names here. But we don't want to do that. We don't want to return the page because the page is there in the React application. What you want to return is the data. And I don't want to use response body from now. What I'm going to use is rest controller because we just want to return data. So we can say rest controller and even that works. Do I have to restart the application? We'll do that quickly and say refresh, it works. So that's how basically you return for the slash. What if you want to do something else? 
maybe you want to return for the about page so if someone is requesting for let's say slash about you want to return something for that slash about will not work now is because we're not handling it so if you want to handle that it's very simple you can say public return something and i will say about method and you can accept you can return we can use our tagline we don't teach we educate Okay, so I want to return this, this is a tagline, and then I'm going to say request mapping. And this mapping is for the request about. So you will say slash about here. So for different requests, you specify different uh, methods. And there's no compulsion that this about should be same as this one, it can be different. Restart the server, reload, and it says we don't teach, we educate. Okay, so that's how basically you can have different methods here. And that's how you use Spring Web. But then if you see this image, we have multiple layers here. We got the service layer, we got the repository layer. How do we create those things? Of course, we'll discuss that in the upcoming sessions, but just to give you a hint, for different layers, you will create different classes. Okay, so for service, we have different class. For, for repository, you will be having a different class. And they will also have their annotations, not controller, but something else. Next, there's no compulsion that you should put all the requests in one particular controller. You can have multiple controllers here. Okay, and that's the beauty. So you can have multiple controllers. And let me create one for you. So maybe I will just say this controller as uh, a login controller. And in this, I can handle the login request. So request mapping, not request, request mapping. I don't need this import. Request mapping for, let's say, login request. And this has to be a controller, a REST controller to be specific. And here we can have a method. So I'll say public. It should return a string. Of course, it should not be a string, but at this point I'm saying string, and I will return something. Because we're not focusing on logic here, we just want to check how can we have multiple controllers. And I'm going to say login page. Okay, nothing fancy, just a login page. Uh, and I forgot the annotation here. Okay, now by doing this, what, what, do you, what do you think? Will this work? And why I think it should not work in general is, we have multiple controllers, right? And multiple controllers has different requests. We got login here, we got slash, and we got about. How your Spring Framework knows for which request we have to go to which controller? Don't you think that's a confusion? We can have multiple controllers. We can have 10 controllers, 20 controllers. We can have 100 controllers. How your Spring Framework knows which one to call? First of all, let's check if this is working, and then we'll discuss how it is working. Or, I mean, if it works, maybe I'm not good with creating suspense. So I'll just restart this and about is working, but what about login? Even login is working. So how it's working? So what happens is Spring MVC, basically, or Spring Web, basically has something called a front controller. Now, whenever you send a request from the client, the request first goes to someone who is here. So there's one more layer here, which you can't see, which Spring gives you. And this layer here is your front controller. And this is not something which you create. Spring will create this for you. And this front controller sees all the request mappings. So it creates request mapping for all the controllers. And it knows for which request it's, it has to send the request to which controller. And that's the job of your front controller. Okay, And then the request goes to the uh, controller. So that's about the introduction. Can I say introduction? Yes, because when we start working on the project, you will see more. But that's how the controller works. Maybe you have other questions. What if you want to send data from the client to the server? We have not done that. We are sending data from the, uh, from the server to the client. What about from client to server? In that case, we have to send data here. This is where you will accept that data. How? We'll discuss that in upcoming videos. But yeah, that's about your Spring Web MVC. See you in the next video.